cheap eBay DMX controlled disco lights and there's two versions here. This one has the red, green, blue and white and let me just plug this in and show you. So it's got the red, green, blue and the cluster of white. Let's see if that's swamping out. Yes, it is swamping out the camera. That's not really surprising when you point a light directly into the camera. But this one is the one we're going to be taking apart right now because this one has ultraviolet LEDs. It's very nice. It's a really nice colour. I say ultraviolet to give it its correct terminology. It's near ultraviolet. And all they've done here is instead of actually using the red, green, blue channels uh, to independently control colour, they've just changed all the colour chips. So ultimately they're all ultraviolet LEDs, but you can still control them in the same set of combinations. For instance, if you selected white on the other light, um, whereas the white cluster would light in the middle of that light, the just the three middle ultraviolet lights will light on this one. It's just a very cheap way to make an ultraviolet light, I guess. So this thing has three pin in uh, and out for the DMX. It's mains in. And uh, things worth noting. Uh, I've already had a look at the fuse in this plug. Note that it's got this sleeved plastic pin, uh, the plastic sleeved uh, earth pin, which is normally a taboo, but this is double insulated. It's not, uh, it's not an earth fixture. And when you pop the fuse cover out, whoop, he says trying to pop the fuse cover out, it reveals not just a 13 amp fuse, which is a bit taboo for a, uh, particularly given this flex is most likely copper coated aluminum probably. But uh, in a previous, yeah, there it is. Uh, if you pop the end off this, which it popped off itself, there's no sand inside. So this isn't actually a proper BS rated fuse for the UK. So I'd recommend if you have one of these first, uh, oh, there's another check. Take the fuse out and then plug it in. If it still lights, which this one is not, then the fuse is not in circuit, uh, which is, means uh, it's time to just chop the whole plug off. I mean, you might want to chop the whole plug off anyway, to be honest, and replace it with, in the UK, a 3 amp fuse. Other countries, probably not so critical if you don't have fuse protection, but certainly given our uh, fairly beefy and high voltage uh, power circuits, it's useful to have the correct fuse because uh, this cable probably is enough resistance to cause problems if, you, if it went dead short circuit in the light. Just a wise precaution. So this thing, when you plug it in, has various modes. It's got the colour mode that you can actually set a fixed colour. It's got an um, auto mode where it will just sequence through colours itself. It's got a sound mode. It's got a built-in microphone. Uh, you can set the DMX address. You can set it whether it's going to be slave or master. In slave or master mode, if you set one of these as master, it will actually put data out in the DMX lines to the others and the others will receive that data if they're set to slave and they'll all sync up, which is quite a nice thing. Uh, channel, Ch that's the number of channels. That's got multiple modes uh, for, you can either use a small cluster of channels for simple control or more channels for more complex control, depending on the capacity of your lighting desk. Sensitivity, I'm guessing, is for the microphone sensitivity. Red, green, blue, RGB, white, I'm guessing that's their, their way of implementing that, is it lets you control colours individually, or just one of the fixed colours. Um, let's open it. I mean, that's ultimately what we want to do. I'm going to uh, confess I've had this open. I couldn't resist it. I popped it open and marvelled at the circuitry, and then wished... I had an oscilloscope, and I've not got an oscilloscope here, so this, this, that's a test I'll have to do when I get back to my normal workshop. Uh, because this thing is in true Chinese style, it's cutting corners, but in a really clever way. So when I open this up, ooh, screws everywhere, we've got a, a four core cable going on to the, actually five core cable going on to the front, so I'll just wiggle that connector out. So this is the LED panel here. And the reason it's got five cores is, is it's got one common and it's got then it's got the four colours, red, green, blue and white. But in reality, just ultraviolet, ultraviolet, ultraviolet and ultraviolet for this one. And the panel of LEDs is very smart in its own right. So let's pop that off. And it comes off. I'm going to have a huge amount of screws by the end of this job. So it comes off and the lenses just press on. They're sort of, they've got a slight sort of um, springiness to the plastic that holds the housing on. So you can just pop them all off. 
to reveal the chips, but there are no resistors. I was kind of expecting resistors in this board, but there are none. So then you'd think there's going to be current regulation on the main circuitry. So that's the LED panel. It is just a bare aluminium-backed panel with the sort of 1 watt or 3 watt style LEDs and a little touch of heatsink compound there, squishy heatsink compound. Then the clip-on lenses and then the front. All very simple, all very standard. Other things worth of note. Uh, there's a little uh, set of pads here for another wire. Uh, to come on from the board with uh, plus minus and data and then a little infrared sensor goes off to the side and I'll show you that on the other light because it's got one but I'll show you that in another video because this video is about this light so let's start taking this to bits and the first thing and um, make sure this is unplugged they've kind of got an adapter here let me uh, get this apart here so let's get the power supply out this is a uh, very much in the style of the modular approach that many of these products use. There are three circuit boards in here, apart from the LED one. The main processor circuit board and control circuit board, the little satellite circuit board which just connects onto the back of the XLR style connectors. And uh, then there's the power supply card. And it's worth noting right at this point that because they've made a little bodge here, they've got one style of connector for the power supply but they've not used that uh, socket on the end of the cable. So they've Plug, they've soldered on another plug, and unfortunately that means that right off the bat, if you unplug this connector from the DMX board, you can, if you took this apart and you didn't know where the wires went, and you just accidentally put it back wrong, you can connect the mains directly to the DMX out. That's exciting. I'd like to mention I've not actually tried this board on DMX, which may seem an omission, but uh, in reality, the reason I've not done that is because the only desks I can try it on at the moment are the ones at work, and as they cost over 20 grand each, um, they're hog fours. I don't think it would be wise plugging a cheap disco light in with unknown isolation. So let's pop these circuit boards out and take a look at them. In fact, let's uh, take this opportunity to zoom up a little bit closer and take a look at them. So I'm going to zoom up a little bit like this. Yeah, let's zoom right in. Can I focus on that a little bit sharper? Yeah, I think so. So let's take a look at these circuit boards. The <coughs> switch mode power supply is a fairly generic switch mode power supply. It's got uh, the chip, I've made a note of this, it's a DK112 chip on here, which is a very standard switch mode chip. It's basically got the mains coming in, it's got a fuse, Let's make sure now I've zoomed up that I'm actually in the shop. Yes, I am. That's good. So it's got the mains coming in. It's got a glass fuse. It's got a bridge rectifier, full bridge rectifier. Uh, it's got the main smoothing capacitor. It's got the chip. And then these components here, let me get a screwdriver and point at them. Uh, there's little capacitor, resistor, and diode. They're actually the snubber network for across the, uh, the primary winding to protect the uh, transistor in this chip. There are two small, there's a small capacitor, there's an electrolytic here, which is the power supply capacitor for this chip, but it seems to, it doesn't have what, a bootstrap circuit. It's very, very simple. It's just got uh, two connections onto the transformer, just a, a single winding. It's an ultra simple power supply. Uh, and then it's got a small capacitor for sort of a filtering effect on the uh, coupling from the, switch, the uh, opto isolator here. And then it's got a y, class Y capacitor across that opto isolator for noise suppression. It's good, you know, it's got a good generous gap. And don't know what the quality of the transformer is like. I now have a high voltage tester that can test that. I may actually give that a test. <coughs> On the output, it's got a big fat diode, nice big generous diode, the smoothing capacitor, and then it's got a couple of resistors and a zener so that this thing will cap off the voltage. It will uh, basically, by choosing the zener value, they choose the voltage that this will put out because as soon as the voltage reaches that, it turns up to later on and it shuts the main switch mode chip off. So it's a fairly standard uh, circuit board. <clears throat> Things worthy of note. Um, if you put this in the wrong connector, be very, very careful when you're actually taking this apart and putting it back together again. I've noticed a trend, I've been taking lots of these cheap disco lights to bits. Uh, they, they have two connectors in the output, one with one polarity, one with the other. If you connect it in the wrong polarity, you will potentially damage the processor card. So be very careful to make sure that you know which connector you took it off. It's probably worth marking it. And if in doubt, 
check, you know, trace the wires out, positive to positive, negative to negative, otherwise you're going to blow up your electronic circuitry. Now, let's take a look at this, and this is where it gets very, very, very exciting indeed in a super low-cost, everything crammed into the minimum way, and this is a good example of why I love cheap Chinese shit, because this is just an absolutely spectacular spectacular design in the terms of the neatness, the compression of all the circuitry. This is just, all the work is being done in this little chip here, and there's a major piece, piece of software in there. The software in there is just absolutely spectacular, is all I can say for what they've done. So let's uh, narrow it down into little modules. The display is driven from just, uh, let's see, it's going to have one, two, three, it's going to have one pin per digit, and then to reduce the number of pins needed from the chip to keep the cost down, they've got a standard uh, 74 series CMOS chip, a 74HC595D. And what this is, it's a shift register, and they're using that to shift in the segment data, so they only require three pins for that, and then four pins to enable each of the digits in turn, which are probably also being used for the uh, the pin, the digit uh, select is also being used in the buttons, I'm pretty sure, because the only component uh, other than that is, I think, just a resistor going from the common pin of these uh, switches. So that just keeps everything ultra simple. It means that ultimately um, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, they can use eight pins on that controller to run all the display and the buttons. The microphone has a little transistor here, and I'm guessing it's just a very simple amplifier. I don't think it, given that it can adjust sensitivity, I'm guessing it's using it on an in analog input into the processor. The processor is, incidentally, an STM8S003FP6. Um, this chip here, the little 8-pin chip, is the RS485 chip. It's a 75176B, which is a very common uh, RS485 driver and receiver, and that's been used for the, uh, the DMX data, because the DMX network is uh, operating at RS485 voltage levels. And then you're thinking, well, where's the current limiting for the LEDs? And this is where it gets very, very devious indeed. Uh, it took me a while to work this out. We've got a 78L05 chip providing the 5 volts for the circuitry here. And then for transistors, the transistors are A01T transistors. And I was kind of thinking maybe they're just relying on the resistance of uh, MOSFETs or resistors that I to limit the current through the LEDs. And I used a thermal imaging camera, not my usual one. I borrowed the one from work, which is slightly lower, lower resolution, which is a bit annoying, actually. Um, but it was enough to indicate the only hot chip, and it wasn't that hot, on this board was the 78L05, the voltage regulator. So the board effectively runs cool. And then I thought, well, how on earth are they regulating the current? Could it be that they're using this in the current regulation mode as well, the power supply? And they're just sequential, sequentially switching through the channels at about, say, four times the normal, normal uh, running current so that this l limits the current through each of those channels. But uh, there's a capacitor in the output. And I don't think it is doing that. What I think it's doing is it's relying, and this is a bit bizarre, it's relying on the impedance of the circuit board and the wires and the power supply and the transistors, the actual resistance of the transistors turned on, it's relying on that to limit the current to a fairly high level, ultimately. The red channel, particularly with the red LEDs, uh, is going to be... The, the voltage drop across the LED is about 6 volts, and the voltage drop across the transistor shows around about 6 volts as well. And you think, well, why isn't getting, it getting hot then? I think the reason for that is that because this chip can pulse with modulate to quite high resolution, they're actually pre-scaling it, uh, even at full power. Well, it's the equivalent of <coughs> running a tungsten lamp for 100, rated for 120 volts on a dimmer and only set it about halfway up. They've pre-scaled the pulse of modulation so that the normal high current, because there is no current limiting other than, than the circuitry, is being sort of pre-scaled back so that even at full current, it's not on all the time. The LEDs are being driven at a pulse of modulation ratio that gives them the rough 
300 milliamps or so through this. I did use a clamp meter. It wasn't a very high resolution clamp meter. I don't have my usual tools here. I used a fluke clamp meter, which is designed for heavy electrical engineering stuff at work. And it showed about 0.3 amps uh, going through each LED circuit. And I turned all the channels on. And it was a pretty accurate, you know, added up to about 1.2 amps for all, all the channels, all four channels. So I think there's some very, very clever software that they're basically matching the impedance of the circuitry and power supply and cabling and then comp putting a compensation value in the chip that pre-scales the pulse of modulation down for that. Very clever, a bit devious, but very clever. I was hoping to see, <clears throat> by swiping the circuit board backwards and forwards, I was hoping to see pulse of modulation. I did not. It's very fast. Uh, this processor runs about 16 megahertz. Here's another thing. They're using an RC oscillator inside that, so it's not going to be super accurate. But this chip is not just running on the pulse of modulation and, and integrated modules for that. But it's also got the um, serial data control section, which is being used for the uh, DMX reception and, and transmission, ultimately, for when it's in master mode. It's all very very clever. I really want to get an oscilloscope in this uh, and check this out. So uh, I'm going to be t testing that. I'm going to be packing these and take... Originally I was going to just uh, give these away to friends here uh, after I'd tested them to see they were safe. But I, I think I'm going to end up taking these back to the Isle of Man with me and to scope them. Because I'll be back there soon. Um, and uh, find what's happening here because this is just genius the way they've done this. Uh, you also consider that uh, the other light that has red, green, blue and white also has a remote control facility, so it's also monitoring that. And a lot of this is being made possible because this chip in here is a very clever chip. It's got lots and lots of modules. It's a cost-engineered chip as well. It's one of the lower, lower of the range. But because it's doing things like, you know, you say, here's the data I want to send out via DMX, and you load it into the serial output section, I'm guessing it's dealing with all the serial data. The pulsive modulation modules in it are dealing with all the, um, the LED driving, and then ultimately the software, all it really has to do is keep the displays refreshed, read the switches, and then just uh, basically handle formatting the the uh, or receiving, choosing when to receive the DMX data from the stream. Uh, it's very clever. Very, very clever. I like this a lot. It's very neat. So, the separation is, I, I, visually, the separation is pretty good, but without actually testing it, uh, I'm not going to be able to tell you how good that is, because you'd never know what's inside the transformer. But everything so far looks like they've made an effort, which is usually a good sign. This is especially important because, uh, as I say, I don't want to plug this into my uh, into one of the lighting desks at work because uh, that would be very expensive if it somehow put a high voltage out onto that network. It could take out these things. Uh, that's part of the reason I bought these. I wanted to see what the separation was like because if you've got a rig of uh, DMX lights and you plug one in that's faulty and it doesn't have good separation on the main side and it puts that the power out to the low voltage output, from the mains, it could potentially blast everything on your DMX lighting network. It could potentially damage all the lights. As it is, uh, the fact it's not got an earth, a ground, um, and it's basically just at like a standard isolated switch mode power supply means that if you measure with a test meter onto the DMX output connections of this light, you do get a slight leakage uh, current and a voltage of about 100 volts on it. Uh, with a 10 meg ohm input impedance meter. So yeah, this this is uh, ultra cost optimized. I actually think this is uh, just amazing what they've done here. It's not necessarily the best way to do it, but uh, it's definitely a way to do it. And it achieves the result. And it means that something like this, a really neat little light uh, with lots of functionality, it can be sold for 10 or 15 pounds on eBay. So um, it's actually really, really impressive.